Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. It's finally come again. The time to celebrate the anniversary of the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus, you are the heart of Christmas. And so we pray that you would fill us with joy as we thank you tonight for that Savior who gave us life, forgiveness, and heaven to come. Now we ask that your Holy Spirit would guide us and lead us this evening as we, as we take a look at your word and as we celebrate your birth. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. God's word that we base our message on this evening is recorded for us in the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. Those verses that we have already read in parts today as we were singing those Christmas carols and uh, hearing that story again. In the name of Jesus, our newborn king, dear friends. A few days ago, I asked a couple of people, some young, old, some young and some older, what they would preach about if they were preaching here in this pulpit on Christmas Eve. And I heard a couple of good ideas. Some said that they were going to talk, they would talk about the importance of family and friends at this time of the year. And some said that they would talk about how people seem to be so joyful and happy and, and caring at this time of the year. And others said that they would explain all about why December 25th came to be the day that we celebrate the birth of Christ, Christ because there was a lot of questions about that. But then the number one reason or answer that I was given when I asked, what would you preach about, is Jesus. They said they would preach about Jesus. Now it reminds me of that old story of the pastor who was giving the children's talk one Sunday morning and the pastor asked the children if they could name this furry little animal with a long tail that runs through the backyard and eats nuts. And one little boy said, well it sounds like a squirrel but it must be Jesus because the answer is always Jesus. But that is exactly why we come together this evening to talk about Jesus, the baby that was born for each one of us. And if we miss that message this evening, we miss the story and we're going to miss the heart of Christmas. And so we listened again to the story that we heard from the Gospel of Luke, that Christmas story. The story of Joseph and Mary going to Bethlehem for the census. And while they were there, we heard that there was no room at the local inn or hotel. And then we're told that Mary gives birth in a stable and she takes that baby Jesus wrapped in, in cloths, rags, literally rags, and lays that baby in a stable, a manger, with all of the animals. And out in the fields we heard about shepherds, shepherds who hear the good news from the angel chorus and they go to worship the Christ. And then we hear about wise men who came from distant lands to worship the Christ child. Not at Christmas as we often see when we set up our manger scenes today, our creches, we put those wise men right in there and they came a little later. And Jesus was probably born in the spring, but it doesn't really matter if Jesus was born in December or in the spring. What really matters is that today we celebrate that he was born, that God kept his promise to each and every one of us, that God sent his only son for us. And tonight we come and we hear about the baby Jesus. We come in the midst of all kinds of things happening in the world around us. Maybe we come in all kinds of things that from in the midst of all the things that are happening in our own lives. We come to hear about the baby Jesus. The message of Christmas is that God loves us so very much that he chose to come into our world 
to live among us, to take on human flesh, to live and to die for us. And we come to this evening to praise and to worship him, for he is our king and he is our Lord. Now, those residents of California or Florida may never have seen snow at Christmas. But as Bing Crosby sings, they still dream of a white Christmas. Interestingly enough, that is all we may be doing, is dreaming of a white Christmas this evening here in the Midwest. But there is nothing like fresh snow. Bright, light, white, glistening snow. And although we came to church this evening with no snow on the ground, we can see the white pyramids that we have placed on the altar on this Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, on the altar, the pulpit and the lectern. That white color reminds us, reminds us of the holiness, the pureness of Christ because he is the perfect son of God. He's the perfect Son of God who came for each one of us at Christmas. And this holy night, snow or no snow, we celebrate the birth of our Savior. And our Savior came to make us holy. God tells us through the prophet Isaiah, he says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. This Jesus came for us. He took all our sins to the cross. He won the battle against Satan and earned complete forgiveness for all of our sins. And we did not deserve this Christmas gift. We cannot earn our way into God's heart. It is a real gift, undeserved, undeserved by each one of us and simply given because of God's great love for each one of us. And we read, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That was God's plan. The Son of God came through the womb of the Virgin Mary and was born in a manger. As a man, he, he, he was weak and he was helpless. He set aside immortality and put on our mortality. He wasn't simply seeking after a human experience or in pursuit of selfish desires. No, rather the perfect God became true man in order to die for us on a cross. He climbed into our skin. He bore our infirmities and weaknesses and he carried our sins. He carried our sins so that we might become children of God who were born of God. I read about two sisters, both in their 80s, who lived in North Dakota on a farm. Now, as they got older, the farm was starting to fall apart. You know, there was the chicken coop that was falling apart. There was the barn that was tilting way to one side. There was the machinery that was broken and rusted. Their nephew came to visit, and he wanted to take a picture he wanted to take a picture of his aunts with the chicken coop, standing in front of the chicken coop in the barn and the rusty machinery in the background. And the ants stood there, straight and tall, in front of the broken down farm for that picture. And the nephew developed those pictures and sent the ants a copy. The ants loved the picture. And they decided to use it for their Christmas card this year. And at the top of the picture, they put the words Merry Christmas in bold letters. But at the bottom of the picture, they added, God is with us in our mess. God is with us in our mess. You know what, friends? That's exactly what Jesus does tonight. He comes to us right in the middle of our mess. The mess of our sin, the mess of our weakness, the mess of our brokenness, the mess of our filth. God doesn't wait until we have it all figured out. He tells us in his word that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And yes, Jesus comes to us in the middle of our mess. When you're sick, he says, I'm there for you. 
When you're alone, he says, I'm there for you. When you feel guilty, he says, I'm there for you. When you're dying, he says, I will be with you. Even when you turn away from me, he says, I'm still there for you, calling you back and loving you always. When you feel pain, when you're sick, he says, I hurt with you. When you feel joy and happiness, I rejoice with you, he says. So Jesus was born for you. Jesus lived for you. Jesus died for you. Jesus rose for you. Jesus is here with you now, giving you his heart and loving you. Jesus is our Emmanuel. That means God with us, and he's with us right now. He is always with us, no matter how messy our life is, how difficult our life is. No matter how far we think we've turned away from God, he's with us. Tonight, the message is very simple. The message is all about Jesus. It's all about God's love for us in his son, Jesus. And our response is to believe, and our response is to trust in this Savior every day of our life. Our response is to welcome him into the stable of our heart. Now Martin Luther wrote the beautiful Christmas hymn that he titled, From Heaven Above to Earth I Come. This is a beautiful Christmas hymn. The first five verses actually tell the joyful words of the angels who proclaim the wondrous news of the birth of Jesus Christ to the shepherds. And the remaining stanzas of that him offered the response of the shepherds and the meaning of the Savior's birth for all the world. There are 15 verses in this hymn, and we seldom sing all those verses. But verse 13 is my favorite verse, because it is a prayer, a prayer that each one of us can pray this evening and every Christmas. Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, Make thee a bed soft, undefiled, within my heart that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee. Yes, my friends, Jesus is the heart of every Christmas. It's all about Jesus and who he is, our Savior, our Lord. Believe in this Savior, trust in this Savior, and live for this Savior Every single day, Jesus is the heart of every Christmas. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.